Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, I've seen a lot of comments from people saying that they're having issues getting through certain parts of the game. And so I thought it might be useful to have a little video series where I give tips specifically regarding a, a certain act within the game and how and some of the things that I feel like you can do to make things easier for yourself. So I'm planned to cover acts one, two, and three. Uh, I don't plan to do four and five because I feel like by that time, you probably have a really good handle on how you're approaching the game. And so you don't need any guidance. But if you all feel differently and actually would like to see similar videos made for acts four and five, let me know. Of course, I'd be happy to pull some information together and share it. But for now, I wanna focus on the acts that I know a lot of people are having difficulty with. So let's go ahead and dive in. First tip regarding act one, use everything. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, that you get in act one that cannot be replaced. So every potion, every scroll, every whatever that you get, use it put it to good use and kind of take a look around so that you know the purpose of it right so you should know if i need some more defense i've got a scroll of stone skin i've got a scroll of shield of faith a uh, scroll of shield and this will all help me get more defense if you're having trouble with someone that does uh, a lot of fire damage you should know okay i've got a scroll of resist fire i can put that on my tank have my tank go out first take some reduced fire damage, and then have the rest of my team come in and try to mop that person up before they're able to get another fire attack off. If there's just too many people and you're getting surrounded and you need some additional help, you should know, hey, I've got a scroll of summon monster here. Like all of these serve different purposes for different situations, and you should have an idea about what's available to you, or at least know that if you're just getting mollywopped over and over again, Come on in here and see what you can do to be able to help yourself. In addition, you're going to get recipes while you are searching around the area. Use them. <laughs> it helps. Uh, Sila already has a high enough um, knowledge world skill to be able to cook for you. So if you go in here, you have something that will improve your skill checks give you additional speed, increase your saving throws, give you temporary hit points, or make it so that it takes more time for you to become fatigued. Any one of those things might be useful for you. So why not go ahead and take advantage? Again, especially when it comes to cooking, all of this can be replaced. Next up, you want to make sure that you're reading books. The game does not make it clear that this is important, but it is because there are a lot of books that will give you certain perks or certain um, increases or boost when you read them. So if you go to character and then go to abilities, you might see, hey, a book here, and then it'll say plus one shield bonus to AC against demons, or this one, which gives me a plus one competence bonus on attacks and damage on all natural attacks. This, I'm at level five, this is in act one. And I only read like four or five of these books right before I made this video. If I read all the books, I guarantee you I would get more. So it's well worth your time to make sure you are reading all the books that you get. And when I say reading, you need to actually right click on it and manually press info. Just highlighting over it does not trigger the game to say, okay, you have read this book. All right, so you have to hatch, you have to actually have to do that manual task for every single book in your inventory before you sell it. But again, it's well worth your time because again, I got a plus one AC just from reading the book. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that could be very, very helpful depending upon the type of character that you have. So you definitely want to take the time to do that. Next up, I wanna make it clear, crowd control is king in act one. You are not going to 
do enough damage to just wipe everybody out consistently before they even touch you. So the focus needs to be on crowd controlling these people and rendering them helpless, making it easier for you to take them out. And at the same time, ensuring that your party takes as little damage as possible, which with each encounter that you're going through. And there are a few ways that the game gives you to do that. First and foremost, they give you the character Ember. Um, I think you get her at level three and she's very, very easy to find. The vast majority of you should come across her no problem. Ember comes with slumber, all right, which is the hex version of sleep. This affects all creatures. Who, who can be affected by sleep. So unlike the sleep spell, which has a certain HD that it'll affect, and then it's rendered useless, slumber works on everybody except ghouls or ghosts or things of that nature that are just immune to sleep, period. You should be having her use this all of act one. Just right click on it and let it rip because she will send all those demons that you're going up against and all those barbarians, those humans, she'll put them all to sleep one by one by one. Now, the only problem with this is sleep or slumber rather, it can only be used on an enemy once. So let's say you go up against three enemies. Ember will try to individually get each one of them to sleep. But once she's done that, the AI knows that the hex will not work on anybody else you're facing and then it'll automatically try to attack. So you wanna make sure that Ember has a ranged weapon in her hand, unless you are okay with dealing with the micromanagement of having to figure out what else to deal with her if she starts running into melee, all right? But other than that, this works perfect, works like a charm. Once Ember gets to, I think, level four, um, yes, at level four, she can choose another hex. I highly recommend you take Evil Eye. Evil Eye is going to allow you to put a negative two penalty on either the AC, ability checks, attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks of a particular enemy. So if for whatever reason it's resistant to sleep and it's a really tough enemy that you need to focus fire on and bring it down, Ember can be the one to impact whatever stat is going to help you do the most damage. Also recognize a will save reduces this to just one round. That means no matter what evil eye hits, it doesn't matter if you're all the way in act five facing a demon Lord. All right, you put evil eye on Descari, he has to take at least one round of a negative four penalty to one of these effects. That's crazy. That is, that's a huge impact, especially in act one. There's no creature you're going up against that can stand up to your attacks while taking a negative four or even a negative two penalty to his defenses. So it makes it much, much easier to deal with those difficult enemies that you know you're going to have to face. In addition, Scare is an extremely powerful crowd control effect in Act 1. It affects all enemies within a 30-foot burst, so you do not have to worry about it impacting your party. And it'll, it'll make many enemies frightened or others shaken. In the case of them being frightened, they will literally run away from you, which of course means that they are not damaging you. And in the case of Shaken, that still makes them um, less offensively effective. So it's a great way to ensure that they're doing less damage towards you, which overall is going to make it easier for you to damage them. So Scare plus Evil Eye plus um, Slumber makes Ember a crowd control monster in an act where you really, really need crowd control. Now, the other person who could do great crowd control for you, even though she doesn't have any spells for it, is Sela. And that's because at the end of the maze, which is the first area in act one you have to get, get through, the boss there is gonna drop a weapon called 
marching terror. You should be putting this on Sila immediately because this glaive, every time um, a target receives, uh, every time she lands a hit on a new enemy for the first time, all other enemies in a 15 foot radius must pass a will saving throw or they will become frightened for one round, which means combat starts, Sela runs out, hits that first enemy, a bunch of other enemies are going to start running in the opposite direction. All of them oftentimes will not be impacted, meaning if you're facing four, two of them might run, the other two stay, you mop up those two. By the time the other ones have gotten over being frightened, you've already killed their buddies and it's going to be much easier for you to take out them. All of that together makes it very, very easy for you to be able to crowd control groups. You, you can easily have situations where you run into a fight with four or five people, two of them are running because of Sela, one of them is sleep on the floor because of Ember, and then she's about to lay down scare for the overall group to get the other ones running as well. This all ensures that as little damage as possible is happening to your party. Now, the other way that you can limit the amount of damage your party is taking is by effective tanking. Now with Sela, that's easy, right? You just throw some heavy armor on her. You just make sure she has, you know, the best cloak of resistance and the best ring of protection that you possibly can and just throw her out there. It's all good, right? But honestly, even in, in act one, I don't feel like she's up to the point where you could just throw her in the midst of four or five enemies and everything will be fine. She's going to get sworn and she's going to get chopped down. So she, you want to have at least one other person out there who's tanking with her. And I definitely believe Camellia fills that role very, very nicely. But I've seen multiple comments from you all saying you don't know how to build her or you don't know how to keep her standing up when you're in Act 1. It's very simple from my understanding. When you go to character and you're leveling her up, because I believe you get her at level one, right? So at level two, you get to pick a hex. You want to go ahead and pick Ice Plant. Ice Plant is going to give her a plus two natural armor bonus to AC. I know I said that Slumber is fantastic and that crowd control is king. I definitely stick to all that. But I feel like Camellia should be tanking and slumber is something you want to use from the back line. You, want them, you don't want to be right up front in the midst of all the nonsense trying to cast a hex on somebody. That's, that's not going to work properly. So instead, put this plus two natural armor bonus to AC on her. And then when you get to the Fender's Heart, which again is in the middle of Act 1, there's a vendor back here named Visali. He sells a ring, a ring called Icy Protector. That ring, if you put it on a person who has the ice plant hex, it also grants them a plus two additional natural armor bonus to AC. You combine that with some of the spells that she gets. So she gets access to bark skin, which is going to give you a plus two enhancement bonus. And this bonus increases by one for every three caster levels above the third. Um, so it'll be just plus two for now, but it'll definitely increase over time. And then you also want to put magical vestments on her, which is going to give you an enhancement bonus on your armor or a shield. You can actually put it on her twice, but you need somebody else to put the second um, application on because since it's a spirit, it goes in a spirit magic slot. She can only slot it once. So you could put it on once for her armor and then somebody else like a healer can put it on again for her shield. All of that together makes her extremely tanky. She can tank all of act one. I would also recommend that if you have someone with reduced person, you can give her reduced person as well. And that will assist in making her more tanky. Um, obviously you want to increase her equipment. So I think there's a plus one buckler that you can both find and buy. And then honestly for her rapier, which is what I do recommend that you should use. I would recommend you use Finian 
the version of Rapier that he is in Act 1, I'm pretty sure is better than anything you can actually find. So once you pick up Finian, just stick it on Camellia and you'll be golden. There, there should be no problems. The final thing uh, that I'll mention is very, very early in the game, you should be able to pick up um, this uh, Lady Calandra's chain shirt. This is going to give her a uh, plus six armor while at the same time still allowing her to use all of her dexterity bonus for her AC. So even though she has proficiency in medium armor, I would say that this armor is the best one to put on her for the entirety of Act 1. And again, all of that means she can tank no problems through the first act, as long as you keep her standing next to Sela. Again, I don't feel like either one of them in Act 1 are proficient enough to be able to tank on their own, which they will be able to do in later acts as you get more stuff and get more abilities for them. But in the first act, I keep them side by side, rushing into enemies, and I do not have a problem. Um, next up, I want to talk briefly about Lan. So Lan can absolutely be an amazing character because he is a Zen archer. He can get to the point where wisdom, increasing wisdom, increases both his offense and his defense, making him extremely tanky. Um, he's a great archer on his own, even if you keep him in his class. However, if you find that you're having a lot of problems and you just need another frontline fighter out there to take some of the pressure off you, because Lan focuses on wisdom, it's very, very easy to um, respect him into, or not even respect him, but take a, a dip or just shift his uh, class over to Sacred Hutsman, which is under the Inquisitor class line. This will give him access to a pet. Pets are absolutely fantastic, very, very useful, make the game much more survivable. So if you're having issues with basic survivability and you have land in your party, switch him over to a class that gives him a pet. And this is coming from a guy who's, I'm very, very strong on role playing and making sure you role play your party members and the way that they're actually meant based on the storyline. I take Spirit Hunter to 20, I take Oracle to 20. But I'm just be honest with you, from my perspective, being a Zen Archer has nothing to do with Lance's personality. There is nothing that he says or does that says Zen or says that he is really particular about the type of weapon that he uses. Nothing. So I do not consider Zen Archer to really be crucial to who he is as a character. Whereas other people like Sela as a paladin or Ember as a stigmatized witch, it's obvious you are tampering with the character if you try to go into another class. I don't feel like that at all about Lance. So I have no qualms about going into another class and picking up a pet if that's what is going to make things easier. As far as what pet to pick, obviously over the long haul, Smilodon is very, very damaging. I've enjoyed using um, the Raptor as well, but I would say out of all the pets, the one that's most useful for act one is probably the wolf because the wolf automatically does trip every time it bites, or at least it attempts to trip the opponent every time it bites. So you can have a pet who's running out there, taking some of the heat, and at the same time, assisting in crowd control for your overall party. Obviously, that is extremely useful. So, all of that together, Camellia tanking, focusing on crowd control, uh, giving land a pet, reading books to give yourself additional abilities, and using all the potions, scrolls, and cooking recipes that you get access to, all of that together should make Act 1 much, much easier for you, especially if you've just been running out there and trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everything that the Act throws at you without any sort of real preparation. There's one more thing that I want to mention, but I'm going to say up front, it is a little bit of a spoiler. 
for Act 1. It's not really a big spoiler, but, you know, for those of you who just want to go into it completely fresh from a storyline perspective, now is probably a good time for you to cut out of the video. I'll give you all a few seconds in case you all want to do that. Okay, so the final thing that I want to mention is when you get to this area, Defender's Heart, you're going to be given a mission to go after a person called the Storyteller, all right? And this is the only time I can think of where there's a time limit on something and the game does not tell you, all right? Now, no matter what, you will save Storyteller in the main story. However, there are other people with Storyteller. And if you do not reach him within three days time in game, those people will die. If those people die, in my opinion, it makes the final dungeon of act one significantly more difficult, significantly more difficult. It is in your best interest to make sure you reach Storyteller within three days time to ensure that you're able to save everyone who's with him and in turn make that final dungeon that you have to go through before getting to act two significantly easier for yourself. All right. And that's my final tip. Let me know down in the comments. Uh, what did you think? Are there any additional tips that you would add on to this? Is there anything uh, mind-blowingly obvious that you felt like I didn't bring up? Was this too simplistic? Were there some things that were more advanced as far as tips that you feel like should have been included in this video? Let me know. Looking forward to hearing your feedback. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like down below, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.